Do you hate doing spreadsheets? I do too. Instead of hiring a virtual assistant to do this for you, which could cost you a bunch of money, let's talk about how you can do it for really cheap and in fact free right this second. What's going on guys? My name is Sebastian. This is Reset Junkie. If you're new here, my wife and I, we sell you stuff online and we teach others how to do it. What we're talking about today is the website Zapier.com. Pretty much what we can do with this website is connect program A to program B and pretty much have robots do work for us, which is really, really awesome. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to connect your eBay store to Google Sheets and make them sync automatically. This may blow some of your guys' minds away, especially if you're not tech savvy, so stay tuned for that. So guys, before we hop into this video, this is gonna be a snippet from our reseller course. If you wanna grab that, it's in the description below. It's only $24.99 right now, and every little penny counts, and it really helps support our family. I would love you forever. But if you don't want to buy that, if just smashing that like button, that's good enough for us. That really helps people actually see this video. And I would love you forever. Let's get into this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to zapier.com. We're going to set up an account. I'm not going to show you that because it's very basic. There's nothing crazy there. Hey, okay, you get to this landing page, and it's you can see I've like done a few things here already. We're going to go up here. We're going to press make a zap. Every time you connect program A to program B and it does an action, that is a zap. So every time uh, eBay sends information to Google Sheets, that is one single zap. And I believe you get 100 of them for free. There's no stipulations that you don't need to put your credit card in. I believe it's 100 of them for free a month. So if you only sell 100 items a month, you can automate your spreadsheets for absolutely free. It's really, really cool. And even if you do more than that, it's really not that expensive. Like this is a very, very affordable program. I highly suggest it. A lot of big shots use this, but yeah, let's just jump in here. Okay, so the first step is gonna be set our trigger. Now we know for this case, we want eBay to be the trigger. So when we get an eBay sale, it records into Google Sheets. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna press eBay. Now trigger event, we're gonna go down here. Obviously new order is gonna be the only thing we have, so we're gonna select that. We're gonna press continue. Now it's gonna ask you to choose your eBay account. I only have one eBay account, so there is that, I select that. Okay, now it's gonna ask you for a little test. What it's gonna do is just send the test little zap and see if everything is copacetic. On mine, my eBay account is already connected. You'll have to connect your eBay account. It takes literally two seconds. It's a very automated, authenticated process. It is not rocket science. But since I've already done it, you don't see it in this video, but seriously, it's not a big deal whatsoever. Okay, now you see, uh, it says we found an order under your account. This is gonna be the order details. I'm not gonna stop on this and show you everything just because there is customer information on here. But it can, you can clearly see the value, the, the item name and all of this good stuff. We're gonna press continue because that worked and it's it's, doing its event. Now, it's going to do the action, the second action. What we want to do is record this to Google Sheets or whatever spreadsheet you use. I'm assuming there's more sort of spreadsheets and kind of that software in here, but I use Google Sheets. I highly recommend it for anyone. It's free. The whole Google suite of tools is pretty awesome, and I use it every single day, so that's what I go with. But yeah, we're going to select Google Sheets here. Same thing, the action event. What we're going to want to do here is create a new spreadsheet row. Okay, so the first row here. Now, it can update a spreadsheet row. There's a lot of other actions you can do, but for this, again, create spreadsheet row. All right, now it's going to do the same thing as it did with your eBay account. It's going to ask you to connect it. And again, it is a very, very simple streamlined process. You click a button, you log into your uh, Google Sheets account and same exact thing. It is so, so simple, but you can see mine's already been connected. So I select that. Okay guys, this is where you need to start paying attention because it starts to maybe get a little bit confusing and hairy. First thing it's gonna ask you, under Google, it Google Drive is like their storage uh, area, so like Dropbox and whatnot. So you go into here and you select your Google Drive. Now you go under here and you select your spreadsheet. Under mine, you're gonna see a bunch of different spreadsheets. Uh, yeah, I have all of these crazy things in here. What I'm gonna do is the spreadsheet is the main home, right? So I have multiple sheets under this one spreadsheet umbrella. Mine is called spreadsheet 2020. I should probably update that because it's 2021 now. Now under here you see worksheet. That's what I was saying. It's a separate sheet under that spreadsheet umbrella. So we're going to go in here and we're going to select the month that applies. And it is now February. So I'm going to select February 2021. Now 
it populates all of these like weird number and data points and this is where it gets confusing so i really need you guys to pay attention because if i lose you here it you're gonna hate me all right so the way that this is set up is all these numbers actually make sense and it'll make sense to you hopefully in a second so you see this 3000 you see the 400 the zero the 667 let's go over here to my spreadsheet this is the 3000 this is the 400 this is the zero and this is the 667 so we can see that 667 correlates to shipping costs, zero is ad fee, 404 is eBay fee, and then 3000 is the sell price. That's the column that it's correlating to. It's a little bit confusing. That's why I'm trying to be slow and methodical and explain this to you guys. So what we're going to want to tell Zapier to do when something sells under February, under column A in February, what we want to tell that to do is take the item title. So we're going to go in here and we're going to search. Let's see if it'll pop up like this. Okay, so type in title and down here you see line items title. We're gonna select that. Now, when Zapier sends a zap, this line title, the name of the item that's sold, should go under this category under column A. For under the 3000 section, we are gonna go under here and press show all options. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually go down here and again, this gets a little confusing because there's a lot of information that eBay's API sends this program, okay? Maybe even a little bit more than what you need. They have two different sales values. They have one with the tax included. So we see the tax that eBay collected was $3.26 on this transaction. So the total value was $40.80. That's not what I want. What I want to actually pull is going to be down here. It's going to be this payment summary payments uh, amount value. So it's 35.43. That is the pre-tax amount. We're going to select that because that's actually what the item sold for. That is what I want to record. And you see my computer freaked out there. It added a couple things here. Okay, so I have that set. Now this should record the sales price in column B. All right, so for this 404 section, we can see it correlates the eBay fees. So what we're going to do is go in here again, press show all options. Now they didn't used to have this, so it seems like with managed payments they brought it along, but they actually record the fee now, which is really, really awesome. We're going to scroll like all the way down. Let's see, where is it? Right here, total marketplace fee value, $5.37. We're going to select that. Okay, so under the eBay ad fee. I believe the line items applied promotions is what you're going to want to select. Don't hate me if I'm wrong on that. I am not 100% sure. Okay, but I'm going to select that because that is the most relevant one that it seemed like it was. What I would do with you guys is if you do add this, if you do run advertising and you do want to record those costs, make sure to just see what that actually transfers as and then go back into your eBay backend and make sure that that number is the same. Now the 667 field. This is going to be the ship cost. Now for me, I input this later. I don't think Zapier has a way to pull that shipping data at a secondary point. I'm pretty sure what this shipping cost would refer to that they actually have the option on here to add shipping value. I think that's what you're charging the customer. I don't think that's what you end up paying for shipping. So that is something that you'll have to add in manually after you create your shipping labels. But again, I could be wrong on that. Pretty sure I'm right though. I don't think I'm wrong. Now, everything else under here is gonna be pretty much not worth it to us, right? The net profit is obviously gonna be calculated in here. Now for, let's say this, right? The cost of goods field. There's a way to have Zapier input this as well. What you wanna do is use the custom SKU label feature and record your price there. Now for us, I don't use it because as you can see, I have multiple things there. So the 7.8 is what I actually paid for that item, but then it also has the bin location. That's how I track my inventory. So this feature would not work for me. I just input the cost of the item later on because seeing the custom SKU is really easy on your eBay sold listings. And I also actually just have a virtual assistant do this for me. I don't use this program anymore, but we actually may start using it with him just to free up even more of his time. But that's how you can do it. It's a little bit of a workaround. It totally works and it can just eliminate one more thing you manually have to put in. Now, when it comes to Zapier and creating the spreadsheet, that's all we have to do. There's nothing else we really need here. Everyone else, everyone has different spreadsheet methodologies and things they want to record. You have to adapt this to your own needs. 
for this sake and for this spreadsheet that I'm using, this is what we're gonna want. Now we're gonna go down, we're gonna skip all of this, blah, 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 and we're gonna press continue. Now it's gonna do another test. This is an important one. This is gonna see if this actually worked right. So we're gonna press test and review. Okay, you can see a spreadsheet row was sent to Google Sheets just now. Let's see if this worked. Let's cross our fingers. Okay, so I'm not gonna cut this part out. I'm not gonna edit this because I really, I love being transparent with you guys. When I first did this just now, it got a little flustered because I didn't understand why it wasn't showing up. So this is the spreadsheet you guys were just seeing. This is the last item I input. The actual test was sent to row 220. Now I freaked out for a second. I thought I was an idiot, but I'm not an idiot. Do you know why that happened? is because I have this net profit put in. So this is just like a field that I copy and just drag down. If you have that there, that counts as a line item. So Zapier actually thinks that there's information there. So that's a small issue. Now let's do this again. What we're gonna do is, let's say, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna select this, and we're gonna scroll all the way back up, and we're gonna delete all of this. Let's just go back. I'm not even gonna cut this video. Let's just resend this and see what happens this time. Okay, we can see a spreadsheet row was sent again, and then this time, boom. Look at that, baby. Perfect, right? So we have our sales price, we have our item title, we have our eBay fee, we don't have our ad fee because again, there was no ad. We don't have this because again, there wasn't that. Boom, we did it. This was totally automated. I did not do this. You guys just saw it in real time. And then all we do is go back here. We press turn on zap and everything is magic. Look at this. That's it. Now everything's automated. Whenever you get an eBay order, it will just automate it for you. It, you don't have to update your spreadsheets anymore. So I know I talk about hiring virtual assistants. I know that's not a realistic thing for every single person, but this is very realistic. Yes, there's a little bit of a tech knowledge needed, like you need to just sit down and figure this out, but this video is not that long and it was not that complicated. As long as you can match up your column to the spreadsheet and to what information you actually want sent to it, this is a very, very simple process and once you set it up once, that's it, you're done. Like You don't have to keep updating this um, unless you change your spreadsheet around and that's a whole different story. You'll have to update this again. But for the most part, you're gonna set it and forget it and it's gonna absolutely blow your mind. Again, spreadsheets probably don't take you that long but if you're selling 10 items a day, it's gonna take you at least, I mean, 10 to, about 10 to 15 minutes a day to update that. So you're gonna save at least an hour a week doing this for free. Uh, even if you have to pay, it's like 15 bucks a month or something like that, it's not a lot of money. And guys, think about how much time that can free up for you. Now Zapier is amazing because you can uh, link up a bunch of different programs, you can do anything you almost want. It's kind of crazy. If you really wanna go down the rabbit hole, you can really make everything talk to each other and have some fun if you're that kind of person. But for the purpose of eBay, I think this is a phenomenal thing for everyone watching to just start doing. There is no reason you need to be doing spreadsheets because clearly a robot can do it for you. So guys, I hope this blew your mind a little bit. If it did, seriously smash that like button, consider buying our course, support the channel, make us millionaires, all that good stuff. Until next time, until we found some more robots to do some work for us, my name's Sebastian, cheers.